Now, here are Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan and Meteorologist John Scalzi. Hello and welcome to ABC 7's 2017 Hurricane Special, Surviving a Hurricane. I'm Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, and for the next hour, we are going to talk with the experts on the Sun Coast about how you can protect you and your family from these life-threatening storms. Remember, it only takes one storm hitting our coast to make it an active season. So get ready now. Absolutely right. I'm meteorologist John Scalzi, and once again, we have a team of experts standing by ready to take your calls on whatever concerns or questions you may have. So let's check in now with forecaster Wendy Ross and meteorologist Steve Newman at the My Sun Coast Helpline. <laughs> Thanks, John. The phone lines are now open and experts are here taking your calls. The number to call is at the bottom of your screen. It's 552-3127. We have storm safety experts from the National Weather Service, the American Red Cross, and emergency management officials all here to answer your questions regarding the upcoming hurricane season, which we're now in on the that first day. That is right. Today is the first day and we, of course, can hear the phone lines ringing already. So please remember that they are going to be open for the full hour and we're going to be checking in throughout the broadcast to answer some of your questions live on the air. Bob? Well, I'll tell you what, Wendy, you can also go to our social media. We're monitoring that as well. We have our social media sites up. If you have a question, you can't get into the phone line because the phones are busy. You can always drop us a line on Facebook or on Twitter. Again, at My Sun Coast Weather for the Twitter and for the Facebook. That's, again, at www.facebook.com, mysuncoast.com.abc7. Those are the ways that you can get the uh, questions answered as well, and we'll be monitoring that throughout uh, this particular special, which goes until 8 o'clock. The phones are already busy, so they are going to be busy tonight, and uh, we want you to remember your questions, write them down. We may answer some of those questions as we move through the show, too, so keep that in mind. You want to listen uh, closely throughout uh, this entire hour. Now, if 2017 is anything like 2016, we are in for a very busy storm season. We saw tropical storms, destructive tornadoes, and for the first time in more than a decade, Florida was hit by a hurricane. The storm season started early. Tropical storm Colin made landfall on the northern Gulf Coast of Florida on June 6th. The damage was fairly minimal, but we did have flooding on Anna Maria Island and in Bradenton Beach. Several sailboats came unhinged and capsized. A few months later, Florida's streak of escaping a hurricane for more than 10 years came to an end. Hurricane Hermine made landfall in the early morning of September 2nd, just south of Tallahassee. Now, the storm damaged and flooded homes and businesses in the Big Bend area as well, and hitting the state capital particularly hard. On the Sun Coast, we saw a tremendous amount of rain, flooding roads and stranding many vehicles, and even one neighborhood had some mandatory evacuations take place. So we also saw high-end tropical storm force winds for a short period of time, downing trees and some power lines. In late September, a deadly storm formed. Ultimately, Hurricane Matthew strengthened to a Category 5. It caused widespread destruction as it hit Haiti, Cuba, and the United States, claiming hundreds of lives. Matthew roared along the east side of Florida on October 6th, never making landfall. The high winds and flooding caused widespread destruction in the U.S., mainly in northeast Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. But thankfully, the Sun Coast was spared to any significant damage with that. Now, but early in 2016, a killer tornado moved through the Sun Coast, first hitting Siesta Key and then moving into Duet in Manatee, killing two people there. A few weeks later, two others touching down in Port Charlotte and Englewood. On February 24th, 36 homes were damaged, along with a bank and several vehicles. Then on March 13th, two more touched down in north, uh, northern Charlotte County uh, near Englewood. Some of the worst damage was seen in Minnesota Key, where at least two dozen properties were damaged. Now, those were cold front spawn tornadoes, but... Feeder bands associated with tropical cyclones can generate tornadoes as far as 100 to 250 miles away from the center. And we've seen damage with those tornadoes as they make their way through as well. So be prepared for all the different kinds of weather that Mother Nature can throw at us when these storms come by. Now let's head over to John to find out more. John? Thank you, Bob. Earlier this year, the forecast from Colorado State University suggested a, a near or even slightly below average hurricane season due to some cooler than normal water in the Atlantic. But that forecast has now changed. Warmer water in the main hurricane development region of the Atlantic and a lower chance for an El Nino has increased the likelihood of a more active hurricane season. This year, NOAA is suggesting 11 to 17 named storms with winds 39 miles an hour or greater. And of those, five to nine will become hurricanes with winds above 74 miles per hour. And two to four of those will become major storms 
with winds in excess of 110 miles per hour. These are the storms which cause the most damage. But even the weaker ones can be quite dangerous. Right, Bob? Yeah, we saw that with Gabrielle back in 2001 when power was knocked out to nearly 300,000 people here along the west coast of Florida. And that was just a tropical storm. So don't let the major hurricanes fool you. The tropical storms can do just as much damage. Now, when it comes to these massive storms, wind usually gets the top billing on the newscast. But there is a much more dangerous aspect to Mother Nature's most powerful storm, which carries with it the greatest potential for loss of life. Here's more. When it comes to these massive storms, wind usually gets the top billing on most newscasts. But there's a much more dangerous aspect of Mother Nature's most powerful storm, which carries with it the greatest potential for loss of life. Wind ripping buildings apart, toppling trees, and destroying homes is very frightening and can kill you. But it's the water which comes with these storms, which can be more dangerous and life-threatening. The saying, hide from the wind and run from the water, is something everyone should remember. Uh, water is heavy. If you had a fish tank that's three feet by three feet by three feet, filled it with salt water, it's going to weigh 1,700 pounds. And if that fish tank is moving at you at 20 miles an hour and you try to stop it, what's going to happen? Now imagine you have millions of these fish tanks pushing against buildings along our coast. Storm surge is what causes the incredible damage that we see on the news. We saw that with Katrina in 2005 when the greatest surge ever recorded in the U.S. hit Mississippi. It measured 28 feet and destroyed everything in its path, leaving only the slabs the structures were built on. The west coast of Florida has been spared of any significant storm surge in recent history, but that doesn't mean it won't happen this year. Looking solely at statistics, our coast is one of the safer coasts and the least likeliest place for a major strike. We haven't had like a 10, 15, 20 foot storm surge for a long time. Uh, the last time is 1921 in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, so we've been lucky. But the data set is really too small not to be prepared for the big one. Based on what happened last year, and even using statistics, we only have 160 years worth of data. It's just not enough to get really a handle on what our threat is. You just prepare for one storm each year and forget about the long range forecast. Last year, the drought of hurricanes hitting the U.S. was broken by first Hermine, then followed up by the massive Matthew. The most dangerous aspect of a hurricane is the storm surge. If you do not evacuate, when asked to do so, you're putting your life and the life of your family in danger. Storm surge is so important, as we all know, and oh, uh, some people don't know it that are just going to go through their first hurricane season down here. So it's important to know uh, how dangerous storm surge is, and that really causes people to evacuate. It's not the wind, usually. It's the storm surge and the potential for it uh, to have a, a problem with you and your life. Uh, John, you're going to talk more about that in a bit, but still to come, do you know your evacuation zone? and if or when you should evacuate. Well, we have emergency managers from across the Sun Coast here with us today, and they will detail the current zone routes, so stay with us. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care, and today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, a place for mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call a place for mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352 that's 1-800-290-0352.
When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. Uh, we're very pleased to have the emergency management chief for Manatee County, Sherilyn Burris, in with us now. Sherilyn, we want to discuss for folks, folks at home how to find what their evacuation zone in and a little bit about evacuation zones. Okay. I have up on the computer here your new mapping program yeah. that shows you exactly where your ev evacuation zone mm -hmm. is. And behind me you can see the map. I noticed one thing in particular is that some of the evacuation zones extend very far inland away from the coast, right. which is kind of counterintuitive for some folks. Why is that? Uh, just because of how high the, the level is above the ground. Mm -hmm. So all of these are what we call lovingly height above the dirt. We don't really go by sea level as much as it is just the ground level higher than the water. Um, water will always go to that lowest place and sometimes being in Florida, that's very low lying, so it can go in very far. Now just because it's all inland, that's just kind of the worst case scenario of where it might flood, not okay. where it absolutely will flood. It's just possible to have flooding there. So if you live in an area that is inland or uh, in a low-lying area or in an inland area along a river or stream or lake, then right. you should definitely uh, know your zone. Absolutely, because that also doesn't include the amount of rainfall potential. Right. So that rainfall is going to just increase. Now, the zones are different from hurricane categories, right? The zones right. are A, B, C, D, but hurricane categories are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why are they different? The hurricane categories, we're really good at this in Florida. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 is a very bad day. Um, hurricane Katrina made landfall as a category 3, but it had almost 30 feet of storm surge. Where we had Hurricane Charlie as a category 4, very strong storm, but not very much storm not at surge. All. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into it, including where the storm is coming from, the direction that it's moving, how fast it's moving, how big it is. And that's kind of just like a, a recipe, yeah, so to very, speak. Very important. In 2010, we took away storm surge from the Saffir Simpson hurricane category mm -hmm. scale so that now it's more accurately reflected, I guess, the right. amount of water you're going to get in the evacuation zones mm -hmm. A, B, C, and D. Will you always be evacuating A, B, C, and D in alphabetical order? Most likely, yes. because it's just height above the ground, Got so it. as storm surge increases, those levels will increase. Okay, well, I've put in here an address in, in your mapping system, right up at the top. The address I have is uh, 1115 Manatee Avenue Wedge, which right, Manatee Avenue residents might recognize as the uh, courthouse. And what will come up is immediately we will see the exact location of what storm surge zone you are in. And in this particular case, it looks like you're in storm surge zone C, I believe. D. Oh, it's D. D. So that's pretty good. It is good. So what do you do with that information once you have it? Uh, we just make sure that people understand when that level is called to evacuate, that they evacuate. Okay. Um, we use that to help determine how many people are in that area, which means this is how, um, how many shelters that we have to open. Okay, well, very good information. Thank you so You're much welcome. for that. Now let's jump on over and uh, talk with, uh, are we going to Bob here? Oh, sorry. Uh, the hurricane or tropical says the hurricane or tropical storm inches closer. Uh, the watches and warning times will turn into go time, and the hurricane shelters will actually open. Evacuations will be ordered, and this will be a very stressful time for many folks, uh, particularly for some folks on the Sun Coast. All of the counties will have specific programs in place to help those that need extra help. And in this report, we'll look at the special needs registries and shelters. If you think you can imagine what it's like to go through a strong hurricane, well, you can't. 
Listen to what one survivor told me the morning after the eye of a Category 4 passed right overhead. It's like the end of the world. The house. And that says it all. Devastating personal loss and destruction. The aftermath can test the endurance of the most fit among us. And for some, the challenges will be even greater. Special needs individuals with medical conditions have additional obstacles to overcome in their storm preparations. And while some enter their golden years filled with vigor, others can face challenges that make rapid hurricane preparation difficult. When a hurricane comes for, for anybody of any age, you know, it's a stressful situation. Um, it can be more so, you know, for seniors that uh, if they don't have mobility, if they can't drive, you know, if they can't evacuate themselves, if they're dependent upon others, um, you know, that stress, you know, is just increased. For those that request it, help is available. So uh, special needs clients really are oxygen dependent, someone that might be oxygen dependent, electric dependent, uh, Alzheimer's dementia patients, or someone that just might need a little bit more care, but not enough care to be admitted into a hospital. The special needs program is a collaboration of state and county departments. In a hurricane, this room will be filled with people getting you assistance if you need it. Our Manatee County Special Needs Program is a registration process for people to register if they need extra help, if they need transportation assistance, so if they don't have a car or a way to get to a shelter, we can help them. And if they need to go to one of our medical special needs shelters, we can help them there too. Evacuation with family or friends is usually preferable to a shelter. Talk with your doctor about it. But if you're going to a shelter, then now is the time to register with your county. There's an application process that your county or agencies like the Senior Friendship Centers can help you with. So the, the bus will come pick you up at your home. That's why we need your name, phone number, and address. And the transportation folks will call you ahead of time and let you know what time they're going to be there so that you can be ready when they arrive. The buses are wheelchair accessible and will take you directly to the shelter. Just remember, now is the time to make your plan. Right now, let's head on over to Steve at the My Sun Coast Helpline. Thanks, John. We've been getting some great questions in here, and it only took less than 30 seconds for all these phone lines to get busy, and you calling in since the top of the hour when we first gave the number to call. And that number is 552-3127, 552-3127. Yeah, I got it memorized. Some of the questions, um, special needs, uh, that's happening as well. Bob Harrigan just got a call from someone asking if the upcoming hurricane season and the tax-free uh, period that, to buy those provisions included beer and unfortunately the answer to that is no, there's no tax-free beer during the hurricane season. Again, the number to call 552-3127 will be right here until the top of the hour. Bob? That's right, Steve. I tell you, we are going to be here throughout the top of the hour, and a lot of people are maybe getting a busy, busy signal. You can go to our Facebook page. You can email us, too. And again, at My Sun Coast, at My Sun Coast for Twitter, as well as Facebook. Go to our Facebook page, uh, type in a message there, and we'll try to answer it for you. Still to come on ABC7 Surviving a Hurricane, properly stocking your hurricane supply kit. The Red Cross explains what items you need to stock up on now and what they're for. Plus, important information for all boat owners, how you can protect your investment and make sure it doesn't damage any other boats moored nearby. Coming up next. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203, 800-759-0203.
Attention, Royal Seas Cruises has just announced their deal of the day, a $99 Caribbean cruise for two people. This amazing cruise deal to the Bahamas is only available to the first 500 callers who register in your area today. So get ready to write down this number and act fast. We know that the best type of traveler is a repeat guest. So we're offering this $99 Caribbean cruise to prove it. That's $99 per couple, including your stateroom, all your delicious meals, full spa, live entertainment, three kids clubs and more. Come see why we were voted one of the top 10 best overall cruises by Cruise Critic. We're so sure you'll enjoy yourself and become a repeat customer that you're getting this deal of the day for the unbelievable low price of just $99 per couple. But you've got to act fast. Pick up the phone and be one of the first 500 callers to take the Caribbean cruise of a lifetime for just $99 per couple. Call right now or log on to royalcruisenow.com. Call 800-906-0489. Forty Carats Family Center and the Community Foundation of Sarasota County present the 15th annual free speaker event, The Whole Brain Child, featuring world-renowned neuropsychiatrist and author Dr. Dan Siegel at Riverview High School Auditorium Tuesday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. Learn strategies to nurture children's minds at all ages, survive everyday parenting struggles, and help your family thrive. RSVP required at 40carats.org. That's F-O-R-T-Y carats.org. Welcome back. Now, if we are threatened by a hurricane this season, there will be new products generated by the National Weather Service and the Hurricane Center to help you determine the threat to you and your neighborhood. The first is going to be fully operational this season. For the first time, it's been prototyped over the past couple of years. It's called the Storm Surge Watch and Warning. This is separate from the hurricane watch and warning. In fact, you could be in a storm surge warning and not even be in the hurricane warning. It'll give you uh, areas that may experience the life-threatening inundation of rising water, usually 36 hours prior to the event. The other is the HTI, Hurricane Threats and Impacts, which is an interactive map to show you what your risk is. A lot of people will look at this and say, okay, that's exactly what I'm going to get. That's not what we're showing here. We're showing you what to plan for and to prepare for. So we're using probabilities and we want you to be safe. 90% of the time, we want to capture the probability of this event happening. The last stage in any plan for hurricanes is personal responsibility. So basically what he's saying is there's a lot of nice products out there, but if you don't take the personal responsibility and prepare and act when the warnings are issued, then it's all on you, basically. Now, while all those products are useful in forecasting storms, remember, protecting your house is very important uh, before the storm strikes. And here are some things you should do to better protect your property. Cover your windows and doors with, uh, again, plywood. That has to be three-quarter inch plywood. Storm shutters that are Dade County approved or approved, approved film for your windows. Now, those approved film for your windows should be eight mils thick at least to protect the... Uh, uh, inner part of your home, of course. Uh, tape. I just got a question. I was answering some of the phones that while John was doing his story. I got a question about tape. Can I put tape in my windows? No. Tape is out. It only causes more problems for you to clean up after the fact if the, 20, uh, the hurricane doesn't hit. And on top of that, it can cause uh, problems because you think you're secure and you're not. So no tape on the windows. And again, you must securely lock the hurricane shutters and the plywood. That plywood has to be three-quarter inch thick at least in order for it to be good. Unplug electrical equipment, including computers, TVs, and wireless routers, and move them into a safe place. And move your patio furniture and all your outside belongings that can be picked up. Put them in safe uh, quarters, such as your uh, garage or even your shelter there uh, in your house as well. And take photos of your homes in possession or your home's possessions. Obviously, uh, now it's Steve Getchow from the American Red Cross join us. A lot of different things. We're going over a lot of information. Obviously, you can play this back too and get those detailed information, but uh, people are still calling the phones up and they're wondering what to do as far as a hurricane supply kit goes. And you have all the answers for that as far as what we need, right? So, absolutely. I brought a kit in, Bob, to, to show, and I'm just going to highlight a few things for the people at home. First and foremost, you need some batteries. You got to have the ability to have backup. If you don't have power, you got to have some batteries. Yeah, and I know if you go to the store when the watch is issued, there's no batteries That's left. That's not the time to do so it. So you get them before that. You right? should be you should be doing that now, using this weekend as an opportunity. Uh, a weather radio of some sort. Again, 
battery operated, so you have that early warning. And I can't stress the importance of that enough, okay? So if there's a massive hurricane that comes in, electric, electricity is shot everywhere, these things will still be broadcasting. The National Weather Service and even the EOCs from the counties can broadcast on that some important and viable information, so that's Correct. a great point. Uh, the, the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some things to keep yourself uh, hydrated, so a gallon of water per person per day. And I, um, I see that you got that empty, and that's what you should keep it empty. Keep it empty. You should fill it beforehand. Again, you don't want to be running to the store two days beforehand trying to buy this. Uh, you need to make these, uh, these uh, steps before you do right. that. If you take prescription medicines, please have those available. Uh, again, if you end up in a shelter, you end up having to leave the area, you want to make sure that you've got your proper uh, medications. And you got some stuff in here as well, some, some food, can, some, some canned, canned food with this the opening. The, this is for the pets there, obviously, We've got too. some pet food. We've also got some tuna. Uh, you know, again, something that you can easily open, uh, some, some backup lighting. Again, it's going to be dark. Even if you go to a shelter, sometimes those situations aren't the best. You might be uh, not being able to see really easy, so lighting. And I wish I would have invented this. I think this is called the water bob. The water bob. And this is another way of, of securing a, a water supply. You fill it up, you leave it in your tub, you can use that. There's a pump on it. You can use that for drinking. You can use it for also getting rid of uh, waste if you need to. So, you know, it, here's what happens. Okay, the watch goes into effect, and then, and then the warning is issued. And so now you know, there's a danger there. So you, you got to have water, one gallon per person per day. Correct. As, as, that's drinkable water. That's okay? drinkable water. Then you water. have to have water to flush the toilets and so on and so forth. And, 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 and that way you just fill your tub up, right? right. And, and you don't use that to drink, obviously, since your tub's really clean. That's right. Uh, but uh, this helps out for that. That does help out for that. And yes. so then you can drink the water out of this yes. uh, particular item right there. And, of, of course, some utensils. Again, you. It's, it's almost like camping. It's going to be a little primitive for a while, uh, but you have to have these things uh, available to you to be able to use. Steve Getcher, I appreciate your time. Absolutely. And uh, if you want to find out more about the kits, obviously you can go to the American Red Cross to find out exactly what's in there, what you need to put in there, and you can go to mysuncoast.com and also look at our hurricane kit there and a hurricane uh, guide, which is now available on mysuncoast.com. If you own a boat, it's extremely important to make sure it is properly secured. In the event of one of these storms, if you have a small boat or a power boat, your best option may be to haul it out. If you have a garage, put it in there. The best option would be to store it there. But if you decide to leave your boat in the water, make sure you moor it up with multiple long, oversized lines and tie off it correctly so it doesn't drift away or crash into nearby boats. If you decide to keep the vessel on a trailer, you should use extra straps and secure it in multiple locations because the winds can get strong and obviously that boat can become a projectile as well. Now, for some families on the Sun Coast, the safest option to wait out the storm at a local is to wait out of the storm in a local school designated as, a, as an emergency shelter. Coming up on ABC7 Surviving a Hurricane, what items are not allowed and what items you should bring with you to the shelter straight ahead. I dropped it on the floor, and he stepped on it. No matter how you broke your smartphone, there's only one smart way to fix it. Batteries plus bulbs. Schedule your repair at batteriesplus.com. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. My name is Luke Perry. 
and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Get all the local information you need before you leave home in the morning. Watch Good Morning Sundays weekdays on ABC7 to get breaking news, plus first alert weather and traffic focused on where you live. ABC7, we're here for you. Welcome back once again to Surviving a Hurricane here on ABC7. You can see the phone lines behind me. A lot of people have been calling. If it's been busy, there's a little bit of an opening right now. So I see a few phones that are still waiting for calls. If you have an important question for this upcoming hurricane season, I advise you to call. You know, they did a survey and found out that people who watch these programs and who go to hurricane seminars do so much better before, during, and after a hurricane that it makes a big difference. We had one Facebook question come in, and this was from Faye Catherine Blum, and she said she went through a tropical storm Debbie and said it was an amazing storm it was the worst she's ever been through and I must tell you that was a tropical storm I remember Debbie and it did cause some damage and I think even a death into uh, Highlands County if I'm not mistaken with one of the feeder bands I could be wrong there but uh, her question is is why was that storm so intense compared to the others the reason why I think is because it stayed out there for a long time now joining me live is uh, Ed McCrane the director of the EOC of Sarasota County a busy man I've been seeing you uh, you had a hurricane seminar today how important is it for folks to know to get ready for this hurricane season? Well, it's very important, and we can't take it for granted. You know, I've been doing a lot of seminars along with our, our staff and partners, and uh, a lot of new residents here. And I think those are the people that are really asking the questions. I noticed that on the phone today, too. Very important. Don't take it for granted. Uh, every storm is different. You know, Debbie was a, a bad storm, but uh, there have been a lot worse. It could be a lot worse, too. You know, I got a call. I took the phone for a little bit while we were on break, and uh, one gentleman said, you know, I'm hearing you guys say evacuate when you're asked to evacuate, but what about the drivers and the roads and how crazy it can get? And I told them basically that you've got to get out early enough before the strong winds arrive, because if the strong winds are around uh, at a certain mile per hour, they don't get help if there's an accident. Is that that's, correct? A, that's right. Uh, it's up to the chief's discretion, but typically around 50 mile an hour sustained winds, we can't send out high profile vehicles like fire trucks and rescues, so people are on their own. So we want them to get out early. And uh, don't wait till the last minute. And this particular season, for the first time, the National Hurricane Center is going to issue tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings and watches, even if the storm hasn't developed yet. Now, uh, because they think that they can project pretty much that it will develop in the right, future. Right. Now, Ed, you've been through a lot of storms and cleanup with Florida uh, with 2004. It's dangerous after a storm, even more so sometimes than the storm itself. That is true. A lot of people lose their life, unfortunately, after a storm because they've never used a chainsaw before and they use one for the first time. Uh, they're worried their generator is going to get stolen, so what they do is they put it inside their garage and then there's carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, fallen trees, power lines, there's so many issues, so please be, we want people to be very careful after this. Yeah, storm. and they're finding out that more and more people are having injuries and even deaths after the storm. I know Charlie, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, of 90 deaths after the storm. So uh, pretty amazing when you think of that. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, all your time and effort. Uh, John, back to you. Well, if you decide that the best option for you and your family to stay safe during a storm is to head to an emergency shelter, well, there's some things that you need to know before you pack up and leave. Steve Newman explains. All of us living on the Sun Coast need to be ready to act quickly should a storm be so strong that we have to leave our homes. And for some of us, that might mean taking refuge in a public evacuation shelter. The first thing is you're going to have to realize that it's going to be a little bit hectic. Uh, there will be a registration table set up, so there will be a little bit of a delay. Uh, the way we set up our shelters, though, there will be an area for them to, to have a seat. Uh, we'll have some snacks and water for them there to kind of hold them over until they're able to be registered. And then we'll get them settled in, into the shelter itself. So it'll be a little bit hectic and it could be a little bit time consuming and uh, understand that there's probably going to be quite a few people there that are doing the very same things that they are. Things you would need to bring with you to a shelter include a sleeping bag, pillow or other bedding, something to sit on like a folding chair, toothbrushes, towels and other toiletry items, along with flashlights, portable radios and batteries. And toys, books and games will help keep your children occupied. And you'd also probably bring along some of your favorite snacks. 
But not all shelters accept pets, so you need to check to make sure the one you're going to is pet friendly. The reason we have less pet friendly shelters is because that uh, folks are, uh, some of them may be allergic, uh, some may actually be frightened of the pets, whether it's a cat or a dog, even though you may be accustomed to having them in your home, they might not have the same situation in theirs. ABC7 will provide information about our available shelter locations in the event they become operational. But one thing you need to remember is that not all the shelters listed in our ABC7 Hurricane Guide may be open, including the one closest to you. Shelters will be opened based on how strong the approaching storm is and how great its impact might be. Steve Newman, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Schools across the Sun Coast have been designated as shelters, and the Red Cross opens them as needed when a storm hits. Handful of shelters are pet friendly, so in Sarasota County they are Brookside Middle School, Riverview High School, Northport High School, Heron Creek Middle, and Woodland Middle School. Now Manatee County, the pet friendly shelters are Braden River High School, Manatee High, school and Mills Elementary School. Steve? Thanks Josh. Coming up on ABC 7 Surviving a Hurricane Electrical Hazards Before, During and After a Storm. Florida Power and Light gives some potentially life-saving tips on generators, protecting your home and restoring outages coming right up. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style or this or maybe this Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Matter. All eyes are on the tropics as Hurricane Irma batters the Caribbean. We'll have the latest on possible evacuations across the state and what you can do to keep your home safe tomorrow on Good Morning Sun Coast. John? We'll give you an updated forecast from the National Hurricane Center and let you know what the effects of Irma will be on the Sun Coast and when to expect them to arrive. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. If you're looking for a rewarding job you'll love, good news. The perfect job is just a click away. Go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day. It's that easy. Stop searching and go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to find the perfect job for you. Well, I'm getting a question from our social media. The best place to be during a hurricane coming from Anna Maria. I couldn't read the name, but I can tell you this. It's not out in Anna Maria when there's a hurricane threatening. You want to find an area away from where the storm surge is going to have an impact, and you want to hunker down there in a shelter is also a great place for refuge. And I'll tell you what, we want to know how many days that you need to have provisions for. You should do at least three. You should sustain your own life for at least three days, and then uh, the cavalry, so to speak, come in after a massive storm like that. So keep that in mind. It's one of the most frustrating things in the aftermath of a storm. No power. Hurricanes can leave thousands or even tropical storms, thousands of people without electricity. But Florida Power and Light is preparing now for the worst. The state's largest energy company is ready to go wherever crews are needed. In addition to its main command center, which is amazing, FBL has a mobile command center, a collapsible mobile office, and a mobile bunkhouse that sleeps, get this, 16 people. Last year, the company invested, listen to this, $3 billion into its system to harden concrete poles 
and invest in smart grid technology. A spokesperson for FPL is here right now with us. Let's head over to Wendy. Wendy? And joining me right now from Florida Power and Light is Tyler Malden. And Tyler, thankfully, you are here to tell us what do you do before the storm and after the storm hits? Well, it's all about preparing. At FPL, we prepare year-round, and it's imperative for our customers, the viewers out there, to start preparing as well. Number one on the list, make that emergency plan, comprehensive plan that tells you what you're going to do and where you're going to go in case a hurricane is threatening the Sun Coast. Next, if you or someone in your family uh, depends on electric power, life sustaining medical equipment, make sure you have a backup plan for those people. Now, also hire a licensed professional to trim trees and vegetation. Uh, tree limbs and branches are one of the leading causes for power outages and flickers, believe it or not. Now, if you're also outside preparing your yard and your house, for that impending hurricane, make sure you stay at least 10 feet away from power lines. All very good ideas. And what about restoration? What is the restoration process that FPL does? So FPL focuses on getting um, the largest number of customers restored in the shortest amount of time possible. And we're not going to stop until we get all of our customers restored. It's kind of like a restoration funnel. So we start wide. We try to get the, the power back on to our customers in the shortest amount of time. We focus on our power plants and transmission lines, making sure that we uh, correct the damage that may have been done to those, uh, those power plants and those transmission lines. And we also focus on those critical facilities, the police stations, the fire stations, the hospitals, and also the major thoroughfares, the gas stations, the traffic lights, the, uh, the grocery stores and simultaneously customers are getting their, uh, their power restored and then eventually we focus in on the, uh, the hardest hit area. Bob hit on this very briefly. He talked about the $3 billion power grid and, and mm -hmm. what was going on there. Can you just briefly tell us about that? So since 2004 and 2005, the historic um, seasons, about 12 years ago, we've invested nearly $3 billion into the grid to make it stronger, smarter, more storm resilient, and it absolutely paid off for us last year. In fact, with Hurricanes Hermine and Matthew, we were able to see almost 150,000 outages avoided thanks to our smart grid investments. Oh my goodness. So FPNL is out there making <laughs> things better for the Absolutely. Sun Coast. That's for certain. And we're going to head right back over to Bob. He's over at the phone banks right now. And he's going to be talking to a team of experts that are standing by. Thanks, Wendy. I tell you what, we are getting some questions again on our social okay. media at, uh, again, mysuncoast.com my too, on our Facebook page, as well as our Twitter page. And I must tell you, we got a call and uh, actually a question. Does Southwest Florida encourage the support community emergency response team? That's called CERT. And they certainly do. You have to call the Emergency Management Department in Sarasota County, and I believe Manatee County has it as well. And you can sign up and be a member of that CERT team. What they are is they, what they do is they respond to the communities after a hurricane has moved on through or a tropical storm to see if everyone's all right, and they get a lot more information. Josh Stone, meteorologist Josh Stone, is on the phone right now. He's been answering questions all evening long, as well as all the experts right here. And those phones have been busy. If they are busy, we expect you to turn in to again uh, our social social media on Facebook and Twitter. Josh, lots of uh, questions being tonight. What's the most interesting one you had? Oh, there's so many. I mean, I've got pages of these. Right. What's the, one, what's the one that sticks one, out? One that's interesting is that there's a woman named Carol, 83-year-old uh, widow. She is an addict, okay? Uh, one side of the attic, she can, she can um, cover her windows, prepare for a storm coming. The other side of the attic has windows that face power lines. And how does she go and protect that window when outside the window there's power lines. Yeah, exactly. Some great questions like that. I hope you helped her out, Josh. Uh, we have to move on again here a little bit, but uh, there's so many questions like that coming into our, our phone bank right here. We encourage you to call the number on your screen. Uh, coming up on ABC7 Surviving a Hurricane, lessons learned from one of the most dangerous and devastating hurricanes ever to hit the Sun Coast. That's Hurricane Charlie back in 2004. We have a new EOC director of Charlotte County. We're going to talk to him in just a few minutes. Stick around. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. 
Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800 628 1251. 800 628 1251. It's summer on the Sun Coast, and you know what that means. It's Friday Fest season, and you're invited. Hi, I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Join ABC7 at the Van Wazel on September 15th in group to the Funk and Soul Party Band, Reverend Barry and Funktastic Soul. We'll be there, too. Bring your friends and rock the night away. For more information, call this number. Or go to mysuncoast.com slash Friday Fest. Presented by Kettle Automotive and Cool Today. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Hurricane Charlie, devastating Category 4 storm, winds up to 150 miles an hour back in 2004, wiping out pretty much everything in its path in Punta Gorda and near Port Charlotte, all the way through Arcadia. And now uh, John Scalzi has more on that with the new director of Charlotte County. That's right. Thanks, Bob. Well, of course, Charlotte County has rebuilt better than ever now, and they're ready to face another storm with a new emergency management director in Charlotte County, Jerry Mellon. Thanks for joining us, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. So we learned a lot, I think, from Charlie. Certainly Charlotte County, I know, did. Um, what do you think are some of the lessons that we learned from that storm? Well, one of the biggest lessons we learned from Hurricane Charlie is that it wasn't a typical storm. It, it was unique. a very small storm, didn't have a lot of storm surge. Um, so we don't like people to key on Hurricane Charlie as something we've had in the past. Right. A typical storm has storm surge. We need to evacuate and, and follow those different types of uh, hurricane precautions. So Hurricane Charlie was a devastating windstorm but they can be so much worse if we have storm surge. And the thing is, I think Charlotte County is particularly vulnerable to storm surge with all of its lakes and inland Charlotte Harbor. And it certainly such. is. We have uh, our, a high percentage of our population is, is in a storm surge zone. Uh, they say it's second uh, highest in the country. Next to New Orleans. Next to New Orleans. Right. And uh, you have now instituted a new program uh, for early alerts for folks to get them the word out to them. Tell us about that program. We have. It's a notification program. It's called Alert Charlotte. And people can sign up for that. They can get different warnings about hurricanes and tornadoes and tropical storms. They can even find out if we're going to spray for mosquitoes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, they can sign up on our website, which is alertcharlotte.com. Thousands of people have signed up with their cell phones already, and it's our goal to get everyone with a cell phone in Charlotte County signed up. That would be a good thing. Uh, one of the things I think that also that we learned as the storm moved through Charlotte is that the, the building codes work, the new building codes. But if you live in a home that's perhaps a little bit older, uh, it might be a good idea to perhaps retrofit and strengthen your home in any way you can. You certainly do. If you live in a, in a, uh, a home that was built in the, in the late 80s or before that, um, you want to make, and, and a mobile home or a manufactured home, you want to make sure you have plans to evacuate because those homes don't necessarily uh, hold up well in a windstorm. The new, the new home since 2000 and really since 2010, tremendous. Uh, hide from the wind and stay in those homes and you'll be fine. Good advice. Thank you very much, Jerry. Appreciate you coming in today. Thank you, John. Shutter your home. Bob? Jerry Mallet brings up a great point, too. The point is that all these storms are unique, just like their names. They have individual different kinds of personalities and different kinds of weather they throw at you. So you can't make decisions based on the fact you went through Hurricane Charlie. It could be a totally different storm uh, if another one comes our way. For a lot of people, they are one of the most important members of the family. That's right. Coming up next on ABC 7's Surviving a Hurricane, the steps you need to take to keep your pets safe, whether you're sheltering in place or evacuating. Stay tuned.
This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. You love your couch and want to protect it from spills, food, and scratching, shedding pets. Introducing Couch Coat, the reversible, washable quilted cover that protects your couch. Shield against spills. Wow! Stop stains and dirty pet paws and sharp claws. Plus, it's reversible with two stylish colors. Guaranteed to fit any couch up to 92 inches or your money back. It even has covers to protect armrests. Machine washable, too. My grandkids destroy everything but with couch coat my couch is always protected looking as good as it did the day I bought it get your couch coat for just $19.99 and it's reversible in brown and cream like two couch coats for the price of one order right now and you can double your offer get a second couch coat just pay a separate fee order right now call 1-800-943-0710 to get your couch coat call now or go to couchcoat.com so call 1-800-943-0710 that's 1-800-943-0710 call now When you're putting together your hurricane preparedness plan, you'll need to consider the needs of your pets to make sure they stay safe during the storm. Pet owners agree. There's nothing quite like being greeted at your door by an always glad to see you fur children family. We pamper our pets, play with our pets, and spoil our pets. Yet, some of us will neglect to include them in our hurricane preparedness plan, and that's dangerous. It can lead to confusion or delay in evacuation. Shelters don't take dogs. I said, I I don't know where to go with my dog. Not true. The Suncoast has shelter for yourself and your pet. Check with your county for locations. You should not have to choose between putting yourself in a dangerous situation or leaving your pet behind to fend for itself. Start planning now with a trip to your vet. Ask your vet if there are safe medications that can help your pet relax during a storm. Try it before hurricane season starts. Get your pet's shot records together and don't forget about microchipping. It's as small as a grain of rice and it doesn't hurt the animal and it can reconnect you with that pet forever. If the storm comes, will you stay or do you go? Well, that depends on your evacuation zone and the strength of your home. But either way, you'll need a hurricane pet kit. This is my safe room, the strongest room in the house without any windows, where we would hunker down and ride out the storm. In here, we have all the supplies for the pets. We'll fill up a jug with enough water for all of the dogs for one week. We have all of their crates, which collapse and store away when they're not needed. And I have their hurricane supply kit. In it is everything that they'll need to stay safe and satisfied for two weeks. In the kit, I have their leashes and harnesses with tags attached, waste bags, something to clean up with. I'll have fresh toys that they've never seen before to keep their attention, plus treats, lots of treats, you're going to need plenty of those, water bottle and also a dog bowl for each of them, fresh medications, and of course enough food to last the entire evacuation. If you can't shelter in place, then stay with family or friends, or find a pet-friendly hotel online. Your last resort is a county shelter, and not all of them are pet-friendly, so be sure and check which ones are. You'll need those shot records, your pet kit, and you're responsible for care of your animal. You may not be able to stay with your pet during the worst of the storm, but you and your pet family will be safe till you can return home. And remember, you can get instant alerts about any tropical weather threatening the Sun Coast by downloading the My Sun Coast Weather app. It's the fastest way to get those alerts anytime there is dangerous weather. We'll be right back. 
40 million. That's the number of free phones still available and the number of how many Americans can still get prescriptions free. Free could be wonderful. That's why I'm still working at 77 years old to pay off my prescriptions. I needed to have a a prescription filled and I had to leave because I couldn't afford it. Call now and see what's available for you. Free prescriptions. Over 10 million people get prescriptions free and the program has expanded so another 40 million can. Free dental. Over 15,000 dentists have provided over $330 million in free dental work. Free cell phones. 40 million free cell phones are still available with free minutes and more. Free cell phone would change my life right now because it is something I cannot afford to get. Medical supplies like back braces, knee braces, and diabetic supplies may be covered too. The free RX Plus hotline has saved callers over $12 million on their prescription costs. These free programs are now available to 40 million more people. Call now. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. It's a lot of fun, you gotta come out. We come down from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Well, we hope you learned a lot over the, throughout this hour, and there's a lot more information on our website at mysuncoast.com. Just go on the main homepage, hit the weather link, and it'll okay. take you right to the appropriate page. And remember, we are here. You can reach out to us on Facebook and Twitter with all your questions. So keep it right here on ABC7. We'll be bringing you the very latest on the tropics. And remember, it's better to be safe than sorry. Thank you for joining us.